I imagine that if you're watching this, probably you're not enlightened. Why else would you be here? And I'll let you in on a little something. I'm not enlightened either. Of course, that may not be a surprise to many of you who are familiar with this channel. I mention this now and then, and maybe you're even sick of hearing me say it. But there are reasons why I make mention of it. On the one hand, I don't want anyone to get the wrong impression. There are some who, from time to time, get that impression, maybe because of my demeanor or because of some of the things I talk about or the way in which I talk about them. And due to whatever we might imagine enlightenment to mean or what we imagine it looks like, we can easily project that onto others. So I try to be clear about this just so that there's no confusion. And there are also some who seem to get the impression that I'm pretending to be enlightened, that I'm trying to give that impression to others. And they like to call me out on it, which I find humorous because if only they would watch a few more of my videos, they would see that this is something that I openly admit to. I also wonder what it is in them that compels them to do that, to try and call out others for not being enlightened. Is that just ego trying to exert a sense of superiority, perhaps? I don't imagine one who is enlightened would really care whether or not someone is pretending to be enlightened. I certainly don't care. And people have all kinds of delusions. It's really none of my business. I have my own illusions to be concerned about. But I also make mention of this because we can sometimes get the sense that there's something wrong with not being enlightened, perhaps even something shameful. And I want to assure you that it isn't anything to be ashamed of. It's okay to not be enlightened. And perhaps if I can be okay with it, if I can show you that I have no shame about it, maybe that will help encourage you to let go of some of that shame as well. Now, what does it even mean to be enlightened? This is something that you won't find me talking about very often. I feel that I should try to only speak within the realm of my experience and perception. And as someone not yet enlightened, there's really nothing that I can say about enlightenment that isn't speculation or second-hand information. I do like to think that I have a pretty clear and accurate understanding of what it means having listened to so many who I can only assume are enlightened. But this is a conceptual understanding, which means it's limited. It's just something put together from all those bits of information that I've collected over the years. But we might have all kinds of ideas as to what that word refers to, and we might also prefer some other term like awakened or self-realized or whatever other term there might be. And depending on our own understanding of that word, it likely seems like something worth aspiring for. And probably if we have any understanding at all as to what that word refers to, we might imagine at the very least a way of being, a way of existing, in which there is no longer any suffering of any kind. And certainly that's something which most of us would like to do away with. Most of us would like very much not to suffer. We might see that being unenlightened comes with all kinds of suffering, all kinds of anxiety and agitation, frustration, depression, loneliness, restlessness, and so on. And we don't like those things. We would like to be rid of all that. We would much prefer to be enlightened so that we wouldn't have to experience these things. And because these things are so unsettling, uncomfortable, disturbing, we often seek to avoid or escape them. And we might do this through all sorts of means by distracting ourselves with various activities and entertainment by engaging in pleasurable activities, by acquiring things, by taking some intoxication and so on. There's so many ways that we try to avoid suffering. And for those on the spiritual path, we may see enlightenment as the ultimate escape. All those other means are quite temporary and perhaps enlightenment is permanent, a permanent end to our suffering. <laughs> 
And there can be some desperation in this, depending on the level of suffering. We can become quite desperate for enlightenment. Some people even go so far as to simply delude themselves into believing that they're enlightened because they just can't deal with the suffering anymore. But all they've really done is block their suffering from their own awareness. In other words, they actually become less conscious. They take a step backwards into further unconsciousness. I've met many people like this, and perhaps you have as well. Either they have deluded themselves into believing that they're enlightened, and they really believe it, or they're just putting on a pretense for others because they feel ashamed of not being enlightened. And they want others to respect them, to approve of them, perhaps even to admire them. And so they just put on a good show. But usually if you're perceptive enough, you can sense in them a great deal of agitation and anxiety and all manner of suffering, which they themselves may be entirely unaware of even if it gets expressed through their behavior sometimes, which can often be quite toxic. And yet they tend to be the only one who doesn't see it. Everyone else may see it. It may be quite obvious, but to that person, they can be completely blind to it. So we should be watchful of this in ourselves, whether we might already do that to some degree, or to be watchful that we don't fall into that kind of delusion. And one thing to be watchful of is how we might judge our so-called unenlightened feelings or negative emotions or what have you, whether or not we feel ashamed of those things. To share from my own experience, and I often get the impression that my experience is not so different from that of others. Having been engaged in spiritual study as well as in various spiritual communities over many, many years, I got the sense early on that there were certain emotions that are simply unacceptable. And that idea may have come about in a number of ways. One way was that well, I would find that other people I would meet in the spiritual community could sometimes be quite judgmental toward those expressing these kinds of emotions. And so you get the impression that these things are simply not acceptable or that they aren't very spiritual, or we may simply come to that assessment all on our own without the influence of others, just by perhaps comparing ourselves with those enlightened masters who we aspire to be like. Or being that we have taken on this identity of being a spiritual person or practitioner or what have you, we often tend to think that we simply shouldn't have these kinds of emotions. They're just not fitting of someone who is spiritual. And yet, we do have those emotions. And perhaps we can't seem to just sweep them under the rug. Now, some people do. Some people have very lumpy rugs. You probably notice this sometimes. That some people, their rug is so lumpy that you have to tread very lightly around them. As I said before, we may just be so desperate to get rid of all of that that we try to push it all out of the way so that we don't have to deal with it. And what we really wind up doing is pushing it down, down into the subconscious, down into the shadows where it can't be seen. But it's still there and it hasn't gone anywhere. We've just become blind to it. And at some point, we're going to have to face it. And the more that we deny it, the more difficult it's going to be when that time comes. And again, some of this may be due to shame. We've come to believe that it's just not spiritual to feel angry or to feel sad or to feel anxious or whatever it happens to be. And so we try to hide these things even from ourselves sometimes. But these emotions are very natural. It's very natural to feel these things. And we all experience these things from time to time, to some degree or another. It's all a part of this human experience. And it seems to me that as long as we have this sense of self, this sense of individual personhood, that there's always going to be some degree of suffering. And so it's nothing to be ashamed of, nor is it something to be avoided. In fact, 
it can't be avoided, not forever anyway. At some point, you'll have to acknowledge it and to face it. You can, of course, try to go on avoiding it, and you'll find in time that neither shame nor avoidance will do anything to resolve these feelings. In fact, oftentimes it just gets in the way. It actually prevents us from resolving these things in ourselves. It inhibits our awakening. So really, we have to come to accept these things, not to be ashamed of them, not to be ashamed of not being enlightened, but to accept that we currently are not enlightened and that there's absolutely nothing at all shameful about that. And suppose that what is required to be enlightened is to first accept that one is not enlightened. That is to fully accept all that comes along with simply being human, to accept all these unsettling emotions, to accept all of these perceived flaws and imperfections, to accept all of these things without any shame or resistance. Now again, as I said in the beginning, all I can say about enlightenment is whatever I have heard from those who I can only assume to be enlightened. But it seems as far as I can discern that enlightenment is very much about accepting things just as they are, being in a space of total acceptance. But I can also say from my own experience that the more I come to accept things as they are, the less I feel disturbed. That is, the less I tend to suffer. But for some of us, the first thing we have to accept is the fact that there are many things that we don't accept. And in that way, we create all kinds of unnecessary suffering for ourselves. We create all kinds of agitation and anxiety and so on. And even that, we might refuse to accept. So perhaps what is needed to get things moving in the right direction is to accept the fact that we feel this way, to accept all of these unpleasant emotions, not to deny any of it, not to pretend otherwise, and certainly not to delude ourselves into a false state of enlightenment. One thing that has been very helpful to me is just to explore this desire for enlightenment, to ask oneself the question, why do I want to be enlightened? And you might come up with all kinds of answers, but however you look at it, what it really comes down to is that we want to be free from suffering. And so you begin to look at your suffering. You go into that and explore it. What is it? Where does it arise from? And what I have found is that suffering always seems to be some form of resistance. Whatever form suffering shows up as, whether it's anxiety or anger or sadness or whatever it happens to be, that in some way or another, there is something that I'm resisting. Either I'm resisting something which is occurring right here in this moment, or more often than not, I'm resisting something that I'm imagining, something that happened in the past, or something that I imagine might happen in the future. And in that way, I'm also resisting this present moment. I'm unable to be fully attentive to this moment because I'm off someplace in my imagination. But however you look at it, our suffering always seems to be some form of resistance. And don't simply take my word for it. Look at your own suffering. Follow it all the way down to its root and see if this is true. See what it is that you might be resisting. Now, coming back to this desire for enlightenment, what that is, in as far as I can tell, is that we simply want to be free from suffering. And it's quite natural, quite reasonable, that we should want this because suffering is very unpleasant. But see if you can look at it another way. Is this desire for enlightenment also a form of resistance? Is our seeking to be free from suffering resistance to suffering? And if suffering is itself a form of resistance, what happens when we bring more resistance to that? Could it be that our desperation to be enlightened is actually causing us additional suffering? In other words, could our desiring and striving for enlightenment be getting in the way of actually being enlightened? I wonder if we can give that up, if we can just give up the desire to be enlightened altogether and just fully accept 
where we are and everything that comes along with that including whatever suffering we've been experiencing what would happen if we just surrendered fully to this moment without any desire for any of that to change just total acceptance at the very least, we might just recognize our resistance, just to become all the more aware of it, and to become all the more aware of our own suffering, and to accept it, to learn to be okay with it, not to be ashamed of it, but to simply recognize it as something quite natural, to recognize how it arises from resistance, and perhaps to ease up a little, to just relax a little more deeply, not to be so anxious to get away from it, but see if you can just be with it and relax with it, and rather than be ashamed of it, to have compassion and understanding for ourselves, not to be so hard on ourselves about it, not to be so hard on ourselves for being unenlightened, but to be gentle with ourselves, to be patient with ourselves, to be more accepting of ourselves, just as we currently are in this moment. If you find value in this content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe.